Right, what's going on my friend? How you doing? I have just filmed part one uh, of our Q&A special to celebrate 20,000 subscribers, which um, I'll, probably, I'll probably actually link it um, in the first link of the description below uh, for you to check out, or you can just go on my channel and like see the previous video I uploaded this week, right? Um, but yeah, so this is part two of, um, part two or two of our Q&A special. Um, raw related to your questions in relation to your training your nutrition um all that good stuff as part one was more based on the questions you had getting to know me more so i'm going to help you more in your own health and fitness journey and if you're new consider subscribing as um, i make new videos every monday and thursday for you and uh be a part of our rapidly growing community here on youtube also known as the gainster express we'd love to have you as a new crew member right so let's take a look at the questions uh so First question is how long should we stretch before or after a workout? What kind of stretches do you recommend? Also, how much should we work on flexibility? That's a great question. So firstly, how long should you stretch before or after a workout? Um, I don't advocate stretching before a workout because it would um, impact your strength and your performance in that workout. Um, it's best to start with more mobility um, based exercises. So it's more active rather than passive and um, actually prime your body and your central nervous system to actually work out at high intensity uh, rather than stretching and relaxing your body. Do you get what I mean? Um, and then after workout, I don't think stretching is always necessary after a workout. Um, like I said, I've got some clients who don't do any stretching. Um, I have some clients who do, I get them to do more foam rolling and self myofascial release uh, with like a tennis ball or something um, after a workout to relax the body. Um, or you can do some stretches. I personally do some stretches after my workout and it's really whatever's best for you, you know, um, if it works for you or not and what kind of stretches do you recommend? Um, I'll probably li what I'll probably do is I actually link right up here my full mobility and posture playlist here on this YouTube channel where I've covered a load of exercises to help improve your posture, uh, follow along mobility routines and also stretches that you can do to whether it's fixing lower back pain or um, improving rounded shoulders, all that good stuff. And how much should you work on flexibility? That's based on your goals. Obviously, if flexibility is a goal, it's something you should uh, train more for. If not, then not. I personally uh, don't really train for flexibility or whatever um, because, you know, um, as my coach Phil Chubb from My For Mover says, it's like, you know, a properly structured strength training program should really actually improve your mobility and flexibility at the same time for the right exercises. So um, actual added work for that uh, shouldn't really actually be needed if so it should be very like minimal um, and anything with flexibility um, I focus more on mobility so using that strength of that flexibility through a range of motion you can control rather than like relaxing your body um, and not really being able to do much with that flexibility um, I think what's the saying I think it's uh is it something like you're only as strong as you are flexible and you're only as flexible as you are strong so yeah if you want to get flexible certainly uh, consider mobility as you can actually use that flexibility through strength um, which is what you ultimately need right if you want to use that flexibility so um, next question we have is how long is the average workout you typically do and do you always do stretching and mobility work before or after a workout so um, I'll probably ask, answer the second half first. So um, I personally do a couple minutes of stretching after a workout, nothing crazy. Um, <laughs> I don't really do much mobility simply because um, my training, like the exercise I do with body training requires, you know, a st stretching through strengthening. Do you get what I mean? So uh, I will improve my mobility simultaneously uh, through uh, my exercises. Um, and let me actually reread that um and also uh towards the fact of uh obviously for um the upper body my main goal is uh like the advanced feats of calisthenics uh strength like the one-arm chin up the uh rings handstand push-ups punch and front lever and then um for the lower body as um you know i've actually recently um started going to the gym uh, simply um to be more social with uh new people i'm around uh with the new place i'm living around uh, for the last several months um and with that i'm focusing on you know back squats um nordic curls and actually working towards the front splits and middle splits i've been actually working towards them for um, about half i'd say about half a year now which i haven't really shared much of um so that depends on your goals right how much you work on mobility or flexibility um so uh 
yeah, that's my question for that. And how long is the average workout you typically do? Um, I train three days a week. It's very intense. It's very, very intense, right? <laughs> so intense, it's like I can't train anymore. It's like if I train like yesterday, Tuesday, today's Wednesday as I'm filming this, um, I can't train today. It's like I need to recover for my next workout. So <laughs> do you get what I mean? So three days a week. I'd say on average, it's probably about the actual workout itself. Probably on average 60 minutes. It could be as short as 45 minutes. It could be a bit longer towards uh, hour and quarter. But on average, 60 minutes, three hours. No, sorry, 60 minutes, three days of the week. Um, yeah. Next question: Which is best for muscle growth, for um, muscle split or full body? So a muscle split would be something like upper lower or push pull legs. I think it depends on you on several factors. I think uh, first of all, as a you know, the majority of my clients who are beginners, I think full body three times a week works absolutely incredible, right? When starting calisthenics and bodyweight training, or just genuinely being new to uh, fitness and working out. Um, I think as I've learned from experience, um, once you get to the point where you get pretty good at doing some dips and pull ups, I think as the intensity increases, it's very hard to train your whole body, each muscle group three times a week and really get three good workouts in and make you know good progress from all like all those exercises. Like I think as you get stronger, it's very hard to like be able to work really hard towards like your pull-ups and like progress all three workouts you know what i mean um it gets to a point where you need to divide your focus a bit uh do more accessory work for each body part so i swear for what i've done personally um after doing full body three times a week i did upper lower where um do upper body twice a week lower body twice a week so that's four times a week in total uh working out in the week and now I do, I alternate between upper lower where I work out three times a week. So as an example, Monday would be upper, Wednesday would be lower, Friday would be upper, and then the next week it would be Monday lower, Wednesday upper, Friday lower, right? Um, and also doing some deloads in between to help with recovery because as my coach, um, Phil Chubb, the Mind for Move, you can check him out on Instagram uh, with the protocols he has me and his trainees doing and himself as well. Uh, the workout intensity is so freaking great. It's like, even though I'm working out three times a week, um, I'm making more gains than ever, right? Um, it's all about working smarter rather than harder. So it depends. It depends on your question. I would say, um, my, for me, from my experience, full body is great as a beginner, uh, but over time it becomes quite limiting. Um, to try and make so much progress so consistently with so many, uh, you know, exhausting and taxing exercises. If you're doing all, all the big movement patterns in just one workout, you become very strenuous and very draining. Um, as you get stronger and you progress onto more advanced exercises, uh, whether it's body weight or lifting more weight. Um, so, yeah, I think full body is great for beginners, more intermediate to advanced. Um, upper lower definitely works really well. Uh, so, how do you split your week, your workout weekly? Uh, kind of already answered that. Um, Noah asks, hey Jake, my question, I do martial arts, are there any calisthenics exercises that would help with my flexibility and overall mobility? Yes, definitely. Um, in fact, I'll link a playlist right up here um, of, you know, bodyweight workouts and, um, actually, no, I'm going to, no, I'm trying, I'm trying to think if I should link you to my workout playlist or my free beginner calisthenics guy. We could do both, right? Um, <laughs> we could have um, right here, I'll link a card of um, you know all the workouts um, I've posted in like a playlist on this channel, all the um, calisthenics and bodyweight based uh, workouts. And then in the description below, uh, there'll be um, a free beginner calisthenics guide for you to download um, to help you with that. So I was doing calisthenics exercises. Uh, you're gonna improve your flexibility and mobility as you get stronger, uh, which is pretty cool. So. What is a good warm up for a full body workout? Um, oh man, I've just linked a card. I'm not sure if YouTube let me link two cards at once. Uh, <laughs> oh man, oh man. What should I do? What should I do? Right. I think what we can do, we can either delay it a little and then link. I think we'll either pop up, like uh, basically what I'm saying is that I have a couple warm up routines um, that I have on this YouTube channel. Um, so. I'll either link it up here, a warm up video that you can check out, or I'll link it in the description below. A couple warm up routines you can do for a full body workout. Um, so, 
Next question, how long should you train and how often? That's a very good question. I don't think, I can't honestly, I, I honestly can't give you a simple answer. You know, there, there's uh, so much research out there, whether it's, you know, uh, training each muscle group two times a week, three times a week, or even one time a week is most optimal. There's studies indicating every single one. As I said, the studies indicating, you know, group that trained uh, each muscle group one time a week, saw superior gains two times a week, three times a week, even working out almost like every day or whatever. It's like, you, you can't actually tell, right? <laughs> so it's all about putting things to the test and um, seeing what works for you, you know? Um, for me, um, based on my training and my nutrition um, and my goals of relative strength, like for me with the workout intensity, I personally do myself, like I can't recover like daily and be able to work out and actually get stronger. Like I need plenty of recovery in between uh, the week and my workout. So I train very intensely three times a week, like very, very intensely. If you actually want to see one of my workout videos um, or workout routine I'm doing right now from my coach, comment down below um, and yeah, you can see how intensely I train. <laughs> so um, obviously there's three factors you gotta consider when it comes to um, your workouts, obviously um, your volume, your intensity and your frequency. So obviously volume is referring to like your, your sets and your reps, uh, hang on, volume, inten intensity, how intense it is and how hard you're pushing yourself. And then three is frequency, how often you're doing it. So obviously um, I think, if anything, I'm actually going to give you a little uh, a little lesson uh, that my coach gave me when uh, I had my first consultation with him. Of um, I'm sure you won't mind me sharing this, right? Um, but basically, uh, when we've got volume, intensity, and frequency, um, if you take three of them, like all three separately, is that let's say if you categorize each separately and where each one you can score up to three. So obviously one would be very low, three would be very high. And with each one, obviously, if you were to do three on every one, you score nine. But obviously the way the recovery works is that obviously, you know, um, you can't actually score more than seven, if that makes sense. So as an example, if you were to train very high volume, so very long workouts at a very high intensity every day, you're gonna get injured, right? <laughs> you're gonna go to Snap City in Pennsylvania, right? Um, so that's where again you can't score more than seven if that makes sense and for most people where like if you've got a busy working schedule uh you got some like actual stress throughout the week whether it's family or that just being a general like busy working person um you can only really score like five to seven do you know what i mean to actually make good progress so as an example we take me as an example let's look at me my volume i'd say my volume for my workouts is quite moderate like two the frequency is quite low, so it's one, but the intensity is really high. So that's three, so that's six, right? So again, I can make very good progress and still recover. Um, if I was to drop them down quite a bit, I may not be able to see much progress, but if I was to do it too much, then I'd probably under recover, um, be almost like operating at a low battery, um, and potentially injure myself. So that's a good lesson you can take away yourself, volume, intensity, frequency. Uh, score one to three on each um, and you can't score more than seven that's basically how it works so you can manage all three optimally um, and yeah um, it's all about managing uh, volume intensity and frequency um, there's no optimal way like how long you should train or how often um, you know it, it's all like personal preference whatever um, God, I'm really rambling a bit here, but there's many ways to skin a cat, right? Uh, people can get results from 30 minute workouts, 60 minute workouts, um, 90 minute workouts, you know, working out three times a week, four times a week, five times a week, six days a week. There's many ways to skin a cat. There's, there's many ways you can build muscle and lose fat <laughs> and get stronger. Um, but for me, what I found that works best for me and my clients um, is, you know, um, I'd say working out, you know, roughly, three to four times a week, uh, with each workout being about 45 to 60 minutes, you know? I think that works well. Uh, you can actually train hard, you know? Um, if you watch Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X, one quote he always likes to say is, you can train hard and you can train long, but you can't do both. Um, so 
I like to gravitate towards training harder, um, where you train harder, you recover harder, so that way you're working smarter rather than harder. So um, obviously you've got to work hard, but if you're actually working smarter in the right areas, then you're going to see the best progress, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's a, I, I know I took a long, long time to answer that, but I, I can't give you like one finite answer, like train this, tra train, work out this long and train this many times a week. I just can't, right? But what I can give you is what works well for me and my clients and what I've seen from other people. I'll give you that answer. So, I'm a newbie, so do you eat proteins before or after uh, your workout, both or neither? If so, what would you suggest? Are sports drinks okay as well? Want to trim down and build muscle? Thanks. So, obviously there's no really, like, again, there, there's so much research out there, it's hard to know like what to do or who to believe, but um, I don't think it's something you should get tied up in your brain, like I must eat protein before and after workout, but it's a good rule of thumb, obviously, eat, like I think it's great to um, eat before you work out, nothing too big, right? Um, whether it's a small meal or a snack, um, to fuel you up for your workout. Fasted workouts can work as well, like that's, that's why I'm not advocating a complete do this and don't do anything else. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And uh, after workout, some people aren't that hungry, so they can like wait a couple hours before they eat. For me, I like to eat. Uh, so you gotta do what's best for you and your schedule. That's what um, I talk a lot about to my clients. Um, the best like nutrition plan is the one you stick to. So it's all about doing what works best for you. Uh, experimenting, seeing what works for you, what doesn't, so what works for you. Um, if eating, you know, uh, protein before um, or after a workout works well for you, continue doing it. If not, don't, right? I think regardless, having a bit of protein before and after workout uh, can certainly help. And then in regards to sports drinks, so I'm pretty sure you may be referring to like protein shakes and protein powder. Um, I don't really feel protein powder is necessary if you hit your protein goal from good quality and nutritious whole foods and lean meats. Um, but it can be a great supplement, uh, particularly if you're deficient in your protein per day. Um, or convenience, you know. Um, I have, you know, clients who, uh, again, very busy working schedules, so um, they got to wake up and get going. So they can have, as an example, a quick, healthy shake uh, with protein powder in it, and it's like, boom, it's done, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it, it's not compulsory to have protein powder or protein shakes, but it can be very great for convenience, or if you are lacking protein in your nutrition, because if you aren't eating enough protein, then you simply won't be able to, um, you know, build the muscle or strength you desire, as well as supplement with fat loss. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, again, nutrition is so, um, like, I can't just give you like a black or white answer because it's really uh, dependent from person to person. And so yeah, um, I mean, my battery's looking at me right now, uh, saying it's about to die, so I'm gonna keep this really short and sweet. Um, but yeah, if this video is of value to you, and you like specific support and guidance with your own calisthenics and fitness progress, then of course, um, I'll link in the description below. Um, a way where you can schedule a free coaching call with me to see if we'd be a great fit to work together. And yeah, um, that would be, I think, that maybe the second description in the link below, uh, below like resources I mentioned in this video already. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for 20,000 subscribers again. Um, again, there's 10 times our growth like last year, 200,000 crew members aboard the Gainsbury Express. And yeah, it's been fun doing this Q&A. Keep moving forward, my friend, and I'll see you next time. Um, after my battery's about to die on me. So yeah, take care my friend.